Welcome to Scramble Game Show. Uh, as usual, we now split, splitting the show in two halves. The first half today, we are very honored to have a guest. And the guest is Mr. Dan Shore. Uh, very soon you will know Mr. Shore in detail because we intend to interview him. Uh, Mr. Shore uh, is a candidate for district attorney, Westchester County district attorney and it's a very important job, of course, as far as uh, our citizens are concerned in this county. And uh, let's welcome Mr. Shore. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Yeah, it's great to you, be here. Thank you for coming to our show. My pleasure. Our show is a, uh, a family, uh, parents, children type of show. Uh, it's very uh, local, local in the sense that uh, uh, mainly in the Westchester or Putnam County, okay? Probably more in Westchester than Putnam. And we broadcast every week. It's a weekly show uh, in the Somers area, Yorktown area, is, uh, is Wednesdays, uh, 6.30 uh, to 7.30. Uh, in other towns, usually, uh, sometimes Wednesdays, some uh, Saturday, uh, Saturdays, mm -hmm. depends on their choice. So um, it does get watched. So <laughs> we, we uh, feel that uh, uh, it's a citizen's sort of responsibility. Whenever there's an election, there's an important election, we like to invite candidates to tell, you know, sort of our viewers uh, why they're running, okay, what sort of uh, uh, beliefs they hold, and uh, most importantly for our kids who are sort of aspire to become public servant, we would like to let them know uh, what takes to do that, and what is the driving force, motivation behind, that sort of thing. So uh, really thank you for, you know, taking the time to be on our show. It's my pleasure, and thank you for the public service you provide. I think shows like this are instrumental in both children and adults really getting informed about the issues in their community and who the people are who are running for office, so yeah. thank you. Well, well we, we actually, uh, for most of the time, it's having fun because yeah. it's a word game show, and kids love it, and we uh, you know having fun. I know running for office, I don't know if it's for fun or not. But <laughs> a lot of it is very enjoyable. I've met a lot of people. I've seen so many different parts of the county so far that mm -hmm. um, most of it's very enjoyable. So as a lawyer, the first thing, you know, people always wonder, uh, why do you want to be a lawyer? Because, you know, uh, these standing uh, sort of comedy show always make fun of, right. of uh, lawyers, right? So why do you want to be a lawyer? How did you sort of get into law. There's only one type of lawyer I wanted to be, and that's a criminal prosecutor. And that's yeah. why I went to law school. I always thought that the role of government, the first role of government is to keep us safe. Uh -huh. Before they do anything else, they need to keep us safe. And I wanted to be a lawyer that would help keep us safe. And in particular, I wanted to prosecute crimes of domestic violence, child abuse, sex crimes, homicides, because those are the ones that are really um, the most threatening to many communities and people mm -hmm. at home. And I went to law school for that reason, to become a criminal prosecutor, specialize in those areas. And that's why I've uh, continued to be a prosecutor. So, uh, have you been sort of since childhood, do you, you, uh, you know, aiming to be a lawyer? I always, I, since I was very young, I wanted to be a criminal prosecutor. I remember watching L.A. Law when I was younger, and I didn't like any of the characters except I remember Grace Van Owen was the prosecutor. I'm sure the kids are too young to know that, but, you know, that's the type of person I want to be, <laughs> the tough prosecutor fighting to protect crime victims, working with the police, and that, yeah. that always appealed to me as a great call. Yeah, as TV show actually changed, I mean, uh, I, I'm a little older than you are now, uh, my time frame really is like these Ironside type of things rather than Law and Order, but of Columbo, course today. Columbo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Columbo, even, that's even later. That's too late, okay. <laughs> but I agree with you, Law and Law, Order is, is now our sort of a, uh, after dinner or during dinner type right. of show now, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people learn about the law from TV, which sometimes is good, sometimes is bad, because sometimes they learn accurate things, sometimes not accurate. Mm -hmm. So I think it's great that you have shows like this so you can really talk about what it's like to be a prosecutor yeah. and to prosecute crimes. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Usually in law, uh, being a lawyer, or particularly as, as, as a public servant, uh, you're supposed to be sort of neutral. But on the other hand, I always believe everybody should have some fundamental beliefs, okay? Uh, you know, letter of a law, but also you have a beliefs. Right. So what's your fundamental beliefs you know, when you say come to uh, do the family, uh, you know, right. justice and the you know, criminal, you know, 
prosecution. Well, one thing, one thing about being a prosecutor that's different than every other type of lawyer is you're not just an advocate for your side. If you're mm -hmm. hired as a private attorney, your job yeah. is to work for that side no matter what. Right. And a prosecutor is not like that. A prosecutor is supposed to investigate the evidence, mm -hmm. and if the person, if the evidence shows the person committed a crime, you're supposed to prosecute the crime. Mm -hmm. But if the evidence shows that they did not commit the crime, you help let that person go free. Mm -hmm. So one thing I like about being a prosecutor is you're not just blinded and following one path. You're really open-minded. You're looking at evidence, and you're looking to have justice be done. And I've been able to put in jail a lot of dangerous criminals, but I've also been able to help innocent people who are wrongfully arrested by learning they're not guilty and letting them go free. So that's my attitude. My attitude is that if you commit a crime, especially a violent crime, mm -hmm. domestic violence, sex crimes, crimes with a gun, in Westchester we see more and more gang violence, but these people need to go to jail. They need to be kept away from other people who they may hurt. Mm -hmm. And all too often we have easy plea bargains in Westchester lately where you see pe police arresting people for gun crimes and then they're back out on the street mm. soon after. And one of the main reasons I'm running for district attorney is to end that, to really- Is that because, sorry sure. to interrupt you, Dave. Is that because we have too many cases that are piling up and things that are, you know, just can't handle, therefore you back off, you know, the police, oh, I forget about this, oh, forget about that. You got so much uh, sort of a bargaining and uh, let criminals right. go back to the streets. That's not why, because if you go to the White Plains Courthouse, for instance, and you walked around at 3.30 in the afternoon, you'd see a lot of judges not sitting because they're done for the day with their cases. Mm -hmm. And the police are doing everything they can do. They're arresting people. They're trying to keep people in jail. But the DA's office, the leadership doesn't have a lot of trial experience. They haven't been trial attorneys like I have been. And mm -hmm. I don't think they really are aggressive in bringing people to trial. And it takes a lot of work to actually convict someone at trial and put them in prison. It's a lot easier to give some quick How big bargain. a staff there? It's about 120 prosecutors and... You can't say 120 prosecutors all don't have <laughs> trial experience. No, no, no. The leadership does not. We have, a, we have a great district attorney's office. I work there and mm. I'm friends with a lot of them and they're mm. great attorneys. And mm. a lot of them call me and email me saying they want to do more but they're not allowed to because the, the district attorney and the people at the top of the office don't allow them to use their abilities to really take people to trial. The top of the office is more focused on stats and getting convictions through easy plea bargains that let people get out of jail. But the assistant DAs themselves, they're great. And I look forward to working with them, hopefully as district attorney, and allowing them to use their skills. Because it's really a great group of people there who are not using their skills because they're well, not allowed to. Well, this is actually news to me. I certainly not close to the, right. to the court system. Uh, that many district uh, assistant district attorneys that uh, I thought you would be able to, you know, really handle. I mean, Westchester County is not a huge county. And no, there. But you know, you look at other counties. Queens, for instance, has over 300 prosecutors, yeah. and New York City, Manhattan has even more. Westchester floats around 110 to 120, and there's a. It's a big county. You know, you have a lot of crime in Yonkers, Mount Vernon, you have yeah. offices to staff here in Yorktown, mm -hmm. all over, and you really need a lot of prosecutors. Some do investigations, some focus on economic crimes. Mm -hmm. it, it really does take a big staff. Yeah, I, you mentioned Yonkers. I, I, I think I read news or uh, some uh, email or something that uh, the Yonker mayor is endorsing you, right? Yes, the Yonkers mayor, Phil Amicone, is yes. doing, he's endorsed me, and uh, we're doing an event together on July 22nd at mm -hmm. La Lanterna I in see. Yonkers. I also got the endorsement of the PBA of Westchester County, the oh, Police Benevolent mm -hmm. Association, which endorsed the current district attorney four years ago, but they have left supporting her and are now supporting me because they're unhappy with the way the DA's office mm -hmm. is functioning now. And you hardly ever see a PBA endorse a challenger. Mm -hmm. Usually they endorse the incumbent, but here they're endorsing the challenger because things have gotten so bad in terms of the relationship between the police and the mm -hmm. prosecutor's office that they want to change things. Right. We, we normally are uh, not very political oriented as a game show. Yeah. You know, but on this uh, occasion, I would uh, uh, like to say as a public channel uh, show, we certainly want to be uh, open and fair. So uh, I'm going to open a question that is, uh, who are the opponents that you're running against? There are two people running for district attorney besides me. One is Janet DeFiori, the current district attorney, mm -hmm. and one is Tony Castro, who has run twice before for district attorney, and he is running again. 
Janet DeFiore and Tony Castro are running against each other in the Democratic primary right now. Which is uh, soon. Or September 15th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Janet DeFiore got elected as a Republican and then switched parties right after she got elected. Yeah, so I she's see. she's now being challenged by Tony Castro, who she beat in the last election. I see. Now, they are they have a pretty aggressive campaign against each other. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw on News 12 there during one of their announcements, there was actually a shoving incident between their two campaigns. My campaign is a little different. We're talking about the issues, about my experience, about how I want to change the office, and I'm waiting to see who wins their primary. Yeah, certainly we, we uh, as you know, for public record, we welcome anybody that who won the uh, primary to come to our show to to have a fair chance to uh, so sort of talk to you if they want to. And I'd love to come back if you'd invite me with them. Okay, if they uh, <laughs> agree. Okay, <laughs> sure, that's, that's good. Uh, I think uh, you know, in election time, I think uh, open debate is uh, probably the most fair forum. Okay. Uh, whereas the other things, for example, fundraising, I know you know it's coming up to to this what this quarter you have to file right. how much money you got and so on. I always feel that that is not really the you know right process uh, for for a fair competition for a public office. You know, who can get more money? Who you know file say I got right. this much. So uh, open debate is is really the the format I think uh, you know. Fair for candidates and fair for the um, voters. Absolutely, and I'm a big proponent of speaking to groups, talking with people. I'm very open and accessible. And if any of your viewers would like me to come to their organization, they could get in touch with me mm -hmm. through my website. I have a phone number on there. Yeah. If I can mention the website, it's electdanshore.com, which mm -hmm. is spelled S C H O R R. Because I agree with what you're saying. It's really important that people actually hear for themselves from candidates, that they get to question candidates themselves. Really find out what they're about and what they want to do if they're elected. Right, right. Okay, let's find out a little more about you, okay? As, uh, uh, you know, f forget about your uh, candidates, right. as a person, all right? So you, uh, obviously a young person, uh, before you sort of enter into uh, the uh, prosecution uh, profession as, uh, as a Queen's yeah, I was living in I was living in Westchester, but I was I started my career prosecuting in the Queens DA's office, specializing mm -hmm. in homicide investigations and domestic violence. And then I began working after that, after getting experience doing that in the city, I worked in the Westchester DA's office specializing in domestic violence, child abuse, and sex crimes prosecutions. Yeah. And before that, you were overseas. You, you, you... Well, a after that, I took a year in oh. 2005, and I taught in Beijing, China, for almost a year, also uh -huh. in Guangzhou, China, for a couple of months. I was teaching. What sort of bring that about? You know, I was always fascinated by Chinese history and culture, and in college and in law school, I took several courses, and I had learned a little Mandarin, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. And I had an opportunity to be a part of um, the State Department has a grant where they send lawyers over to China to train Chinese judges and lawyers and students about the American due process system. Right. So I, I was part of that and I had this amazing opportunity to go over and teach there for a year and it was one of the most fascinating experiences of my life. I got to travel all around China, around Asia, even into North Korea for a few days. It was just an eye-opening experience that I, it, I will never forget. So are you uh, able to speak Chinese? And, uh, uh, I will say this studio, 所以我就想說用這個這種電視這種設備來教中文,我的想法。So uh, far you understand yeah, you right? You just said you're you're going to teach people Chinese through right. a TV show coming up. Right. All right. The, the, I'm let, following you yeah. so far. Yeah, you follow me. I know, I'm sure you follow me. Now I'm yeah. thinking about for the audience. So right. I, I'm going to switch back to English. Sure. Uh, we I mean do this in this format in my uh, thinking is this uh, language is hard, and Absolutely. Chinese language is even harder. Absolutely. And even kids have motivation, there will be difficulty. So I am trying to get the difficulty out of it, right? Uh, learn language, you have to focus, you have to have the attention, you know, sort of patience, so on. So I'm trying to set up the, the sort of ambient, right, like a studio, that you automatically have the attention. 
uh, you focus on it because right now you, you and I are being you know on television. Right. Uh, you're not going to think about other things other than well, this is what we are talking about. So in that kind of environment, they will you know focus on this language, and we also have all this audiovisual stuff to support, and language is all based on that, right? So. I'm designing my own teaching material to introduce uh, the Chinese teaching. Uh, first, through phonetics, as you know, the hardest part is pronunciation, right, in Chinese. The subtlety about the, the tones. tones. Yes. So we'll get through that, and we'll get to this, and the mapping the, the so-called alphabets, you know, the Chinese don't have alphabet, but their sound can be represented by alphabet. Right, or, pinyin. You know, yeah, pinging or uh, other system. So we want to map that so that you get that over with very quickly, not bogged down by the you know burdens away. I have to learn some. Then purely treat language almost like music. Listen to it, practice it, and you get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you ask any musician. That's how music is learned. Language too. You go to Europe, you travel, they speak several languages. Right. It's just because they listen and practice. Absolutely. So, so we want to do that. And I hope that uh, maybe we can invite you back to, uh, to uh, sort of a, as a witness or as, a, you know, see whether uh, this method is, is um, you know, effective. I would love to come back. I, I, I know I need a lot of work on my tones, so maybe you can help me get better. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Okay. okay. All right. Absolutely. All right, let's get back to our, our main thing, you see. Now, from now to November is not too long. Right? No, it's about three and a half months, four right. months. So what's uh, your uh, plans at this point? I'm going all over the county, talking to people at train stations, festivals, door to door. Mm -hmm. And the main point is I want to tell people what I'll do differently as district attorney right. than what's happening yeah. now. And I could give you an example if you'd like. Uh, one of the most important things about being a prosecutor is you work with crime victims. And it's important that crime victims have a stable prosecutor helping them. It's very scary to be a victim of a crime because not only are you victimized, but then you go through this foreign system of the courts mm -hmm. where it's not always friendly, yes. it's confusing, and what they have now is they have an antiquated system in Westchester where you'll have one prosecutor working with you at arraignments, one at grand jury, another at trial, another who does motions. Different people. Yeah, different people. And that's how everyone used to do it 15 or 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But everyone else has moved on to a system of what's called vertical prosecution. So if you're a crime victim, they'll have one prosecutor who meets you right away when the crime is committed, as soon as possible, when mm -hmm. the police intervene. And they stay with you every step of the way. This mm -hmm. is how all of New York City does it. The federal government, Nassau County, Putnam County, Rockland County. Westchester is behind the times, and I had a friend who was recently a victim of a sex crime in Westchester, mm -hmm. and she called me because I'm a former sex crimes prosecutor, and she was very upset because she had to go through five different prosecutors, and it's, you know, to go through a few months of your case, and then all of a sudden you get a call from someone saying, hey, I'm your new prosecutor, tell me what happened six Again. months ago. <laughs> yeah, it's very frustrating, and we're going to change that. So on day one, I'm going to make sure that every case has one prosecutor or one team of prosecutors. That to make a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, and there's really no excuse why it's not being done. So that's a big thing I want to change. But mm -hmm. your question was what I'm doing. It's really about communicating that to people, letting people know. And, you know, we are at any public gathering that we know about. I love talking to people in groups. Some mm -hmm. people call me through my website, on our phone line, and, uh, talking to people. I really want to be accessible to people so they can so, ask questions. So, uh, you know, uh, what's your website uh, domain name? It's electdanshore.com. Electdanshore.com. And it's spelled S-C-H-O-R-R. They could also find me on YouTube, Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have a Facebook page for your show, but it's a great way to communicate with people. And uh, a lot of people have linked to me through those medium. Right. And uh, also, what's your email? It's important. Um, they can email info mm -hmm. at electdanshore.com. Once okay. again, that's S C H O R. Yeah, I, I know personally. I know that you s seem to attend to every email that's uh, sent to you. Yeah, um, I do personally. Or if I have someone on my campaign staff get it, if it's a personal email to me, they'll immediately forward it to me, and I'll personally respond to anything. Right. Now, uh, your your campaign process. Do you uh, have? Uh, Young people helping you as uh, sort of uh, volunteers or? Yeah, you know, the age range is all over the place. We have, um, mm -hmm. you know, people who are older, people who are younger, a bunch of college kids. My parents are helping out. I have uh, 
a big team of people. And mm -hmm. if you go to any of the, you know, the big festivals, Kensigo Dam, other places, you'll see a whole team of people, mm -hmm. my signs, literature, t-shirts. And it's really important to spread the right. word and communicate that, that's, it. That's what I believe how, this uh, campaign should be, right. is, is have volunteers, people right. willing to help you. Such as and the Asian perhaps, American Heritage Festival. Yeah, Trust perhaps in our audience and even uh, the audience at the studio, someone you know, interested uh, in, in uh, helping you. That'd be great. I, I see a lot of great young kids here. I'd love to have them on board. Right. Yeah. So this this process uh, uh, go on for uh, three months before uh, then the election. Right. And then, as you already said, something that um, after you get elected, you want to sort of shape up the organization part right. of the you know core system. And uh, anything beyond that? In terms of what? In terms of doing things for the office? Yes. Yeah, I want to change the relationship between the DA's office and the police so they, the police get more support from the DA's office, that they actually communicate with them. A lot of times the police have their cases pled out without even telling them what's happening, and the police really need to know what's happening with their case because sometimes there are other crimes that are related to it. So I want to change the relationship between mm -hmm. the police and the DA's office. Well, that's definitely important. It's, yeah. you know, it's sort of a, a hand-in-glove type of a you know, situation. You right. have to cooperate, yes. Well. Uh, I would like, like to have a sort of a live questions to ask you from the audience, but of course, a TV audience, it's, you know, we are not into a digital uh, state yet that uh, people call in you know, through this mm -hmm. studio. Uh, that would be nice. Uh, maybe we will ask whether in the studio anybody wants to ask a question. Anybody? Uh, Jaren, you want to ask a question? Come on. <laughs> There's a question there. Oh, here. All right. Um, crime victims, what happens to them? You, you say you'll have a better relationship with them, but what about the rest of the people involved in the crime? You mean families and friends? Well, the important thing is you mean creating some kind of center for them to. Uh, uh, one thing that's really important, like the question alluded to, is the, quest the uh, crime victim isn't the only person hurt by a crime family, friends are often hurt by it too, and you need to have some kind of counseling resources to help mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And one thing we want to do that they do in New York City is they have what's called family justice centers where they have a lot of counseling services in one location and people can really get the resources they need. People after the case is over still have issues from the crime. Sometimes it's financial loss, sometimes it's physical injury, sometimes it's emotional trauma, mm -hmm. and we need to get counseling for them. Yeah, I think uh, related to that question, I, I think one important thing is, of course, you, you alluded to earlier, this is a foreign language or a foreign country because the, the legal language is not really uh, you know, your spoken right. language. And the most people, once in, into the court system, it, it, appalled by the fact that you have to deal with these special terminologies. Right? Uh, there is some help. I know that in, in federal court or you know, court system, they do have some people that sign to sort of explain to you or explain to you what sort of a procedure or things or form things. Uh, they're not supposed to advise you anything, but mm -hmm. on this. But personally, I feel uh, that process, that help, probably is not well known. It's not that effective yet, right. okay? Because still everybody feels they hate it. They, you gotta have uh, money to pay for you know, expensive lawyer in order to go through this uh, process. Right. Well, that's why it's important to have accessible services. A lot of the good services do exist in Westchester, but they're spread out all over the place. That's why it's important to have them in a central location where people can say, this is where you go for services, and you have one-stop shopping mm -hmm. for all those services. Mm -hmm. It is scary. If you're a crime victim and all of a sudden you're part of the legal system, right, there are terms you don't know, there are people you don't understand. There's a lawyer for the defendant who often is very adversarial to you, mm -hmm. and you need assistance. Right. I, I want oh, to bring. I hear uh, another question there. Okay. If you spoke about uh, political uh, hampering at the top with the uh, um, um, district attorney, right? If you became district attorney, um, uh, would you do anything to uh, alleviate that hampering? Um, uh, you know, for justice, for the sake of justice. Well, absolutely. You know, the, this office was politicized. The district attorney switched parties. There are some other issues. It, the DA is supposed to be very different from any other office. Right. You're not right. supposed to be mm -hmm. political in the in the bad sense of the word. You really are supposed to be just focused on investigating cases, 
looking into things and doing what's right. And I come from this not from someone who wanted to run for just any office. I want to be a prosecutor. I want to continue to be a prosecutor. And you know, as the questioner alluded to, it's really important that the DA is kind of above the fray of political right. maneuvering. And unfortunately, we don't have that now. But mm -hmm. you know, hopefully that will change after the election if I'm elected. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. And uh, so again, I'm uh, opening to uh, other candidates, whoever wanted to come to uh, sort of debate on the point or have their views, uh, we open to them. That's great. Right. Now, and I hope uh, they take you up on that. This is a great forum. Well, we certainly tried, okay. As, as you know, we are volunteers. Our show is uh, uh, purely depending on people that have volunteered their time and energy for doing this. Uh, we don't have any uh, sort of budget, so to speak, okay. Right. Uh, but um, we do have a following. We have some kids that are very faithful, particularly during the school years. Every week, they come to play the war game. Okay, so I think uh, it's, a, it's a tradition we like to keep and to link with the sort of a public office volunteer work and the election and so on, it's natural. I, I feel that it's uh, good for the kids to know, to make that connection. Uh, someday they will have to decide in their career what do they want to do in, in their lives, right? Absolutely. So, uh, you have any good words for our kids to sort of uh, advise them or motivate them? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I would say, first of all, I think it's great when kids focus on educational things such as your game and other things where they could really learn. And I would say to them, you know, follow your dreams. A lot of times people are discouraged from really going after what they want to do. And I think it's really important for kids to say, you know, this is my goal. And as high as it is, I'm going for it. And I'm not going to stop till I get it. I know that you know I'm following my dream, and I hope kids do the same. You know, this is an exciting time in the world where I know sometimes people get down on the economy and other things, but there's really so many opportunities now with new technology, and we have this international world that's all connected. And uh, to be a young person now and to be able to take advantage of these opportunities, I think is great. So I would encourage them to, you know, think about your wildest dream and then go for it. Yeah, and I I noticed that um, uh, more and more younger people now enter into public office, mm -hmm. you know, elections and so on, uh, more so than, say, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Uh, this, I think, it's good, but on the other hand, also f being a senior person, uh, feel that, hey, what do you do when you are getting to senior, <laughs> right? So people are now running for big offices very young. I mean, even be the president in you know, 40s, right. Right? right? So what, what do you think? This is... Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't think age is a big factor. Obviously, you know, experience helps, and I think that's one thing I bring as having experience actually trying dangerous cases. But it's really about the judgment and experience of the individual. I don't think the, the chronological age isn't as important because there are older people who don't have experience, mm -hmm. and sometimes a younger person has experience, but sometimes the older person has better experience. So I look at, when I vote, who has real experience doing the real things that are required. But for certainly for kids today, yeah. they have to sort of mold themselves and shape their mind and come to decision very early. You know, you can't sort of uh, wishy-washy for too long because time just go, goes by. That's true, but you know what? There are a lot of people who later in life have decided to focus on a new career. Uh, when I was in law school, there were many people who were middle-aged who, who were doing law as a second career and having very active, fulfilling careers in the law. Yeah. So I don't think there's ever a time in your life where it's just too late. I think, you know, we have amazing opportunities of people for any age. Right, right. Well, absolutely. And I am so glad that you can spend the time you know, to, to share your views with our audience. It's my pleasure. It's an and, honor to be hopefully, here. Hopefully, uh, we'll have you back again. And uh, if somebody wants to uh, challenge you, we'll definitely let you know. Absolutely. Right? Uh, we could uh, play your word game against each other. Oh, definitely, definitely. Right. You, you, you know, welcome to uh, stay and watch and how we play the game. This game actually plays many, many ways, uh, more than 30 different games. It's called Scramble. Okay? Uh, it's, based on very simple principle is scrambling letters to make words and longer and longer. You can steal other people's words and so forth. Uh, then we adapt the other games, known games procedures to make into different games. In fact, today, after this show, we're gonna have this scramble mahjong. You are in China, you know, mahjong is a big game. Absolutely. Okay. How do you play mahjong with English alphabets? That's what we do. I'm, I'm curious to find out. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you Thank very you so much. much. Really I you. enjoyed your presence here. I enjoyed it very and, much. And uh, we today sorry about the parking situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right.